peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America. And today we're going to continue our study of the, the Torah. Because we know that the Torah contains the foundation of America and goes hand in hand with the Constitution to help us have a free uh, society. So we want to get back to our roots and to understand the Torah more. And we are in chapter 10 of Genesis. And of course we are using the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And please feel free to follow along. And as always I would suggest that you keep a some type of marker handy so that you can mark things that you think are important so you can find it again later on. So let's go ahead and get started. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Now of course it lists off the, the names of all the sons and you say, well, well why is this important? This is boring. Well, it's to show that we are to keep records of genealogy. And the reason for that is so that we can know our ancestors, know what they did, so we can know who we are and what we are capable of. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tiras, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Riphath and Togarma and the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Phut and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba and Havila and Sabta, and Ra'ama, and Sabteka, and the sons of Ra'ama, Shiva, and Dedan, and Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter even, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. Now let's talk about this term, this, this figure, Nimrod, who is called a Mighty One. In Hebrew, Mighty One could be referenced to tyrants as well. And so Nimrod, being a hunter, became also king of that region, which is where we begin to separate from the wisdom of God wherein to have a system of judges that are chosen by the people or elected by the people Nimrod follows his own path and establishes a kingdom with himself as king and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel or Babel and Erech and Echad or Exad and Kalna in the land of Shinar out of that land went forth Ashur and builded Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth and Kala, and Rosen got Nineveh and Kala, the same as a great city, and Mizraim begat Ludim. I just noticed something. Mizraim is is a is the real name of Egypt actually and so it's possibly that this Mizraim is the one, is the foundation of Egypt this just a thought and Mizraim begat Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Pathrusim and Kathluhim out of whom went Philistim and Kaphtorim and 
Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. And the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamathite. And afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerer, and to Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zebun, even unto Lasha. These were the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, and their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him, were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash, and Arphaxad begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber, and unto Eber was born two sons, and the name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan, and Joktan begat Al-Madad, and Shelf-Lef, and hazar Mavath and Jera, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Ubal, and Abimael, and Shiva, and Ophir, and Havila, and Jobab, and all these were the sons of Joktan, and their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest unto Safar, a mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, and their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, and their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth, after the flood. Now that's the end of chapter 10, so let's move on to chapter 3. And the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, and they may not that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Bebel, which the Lord did there confound, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So here we're talking about the Tower of Babel or Bebel. And it wasn't the act of building a tower itself that angered the Lord. It was that they were, it says here, it says, um, to go to let, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They were afraid of the judgment of the Lord. They thought they, they didn't want to be scattered upon all the face of the earth. They wanted to be centralized into one structure. And also, according to tradition, it was because they wanted to reach into heaven to overthrow the gods. It was because they were afraid that the Lord was going to bring another flood. And they wanted to make sure they were safe and, and that their name would continue for the earth in the earth forever. 
So the Lord, what the Lord did is that he changed their language. We don't know how he did it. I have a theory. My theory is that he took the knowledge of vowels away because originally vowels were not written out. So he took that away and then everybody language got confused. I, I don't know if that's how it really, that's just my theory. But he, the Lord changed the language in a way so that different groups of people couldn't understand each other anymore. And so they all divided that way. Now this is very important to understand. When man is united, they work far greater wickedness. So the Lord separates people from each other and for some reason that produces less wickedness in the earth. Now Nimrod, this self-appointed king over the people, was the one behind the tower and he had a wisdom which is the wisdom of subjugating men beneath them and that is the true wisdom of Babylon of Babel and the idea of Babylon is uniting all the nations under one that's not what the Lord said he separates the, the people one from another gives them their own language and their own wisdom and any attempt to establish a one world organization is, until the Lord returns is evil before the Lord and is done under the inspiration of the devil. And so look what we have today. We have the United Nations which represents a one world government. They want to create a one world religion. They want to create a one world order. This is all evil before the Lord because it contradicts what the Lord has done. And this system is being built up outside of the Lord. When the Lord returns, he will establish his own system. And it'll look like the Torah and it will look like the Constitution together. And the Lord himself will be in control of it. But people will still have free agency, but they will acknowledge the Lord. But that is the only system that the world is supposed to have, and it won't be here until the Lord returns. Until then, we are to be divided and scattered upon the face of the earth. Otherwise, it is evil and being done by the, the, the wisdom of Satan. Now we have a continuation of genealogy, which I know is, is boring to most people, but if you claim to be a descendant of Israel, this is your heritage. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad. 500 years and begat sons and daughters, and Arvaxad lived 5 and 30 years and begot Salah, and Arvaxad lived after he begot Salah 403 years and begat sons and daughters, and Salah lived 30 years and begot Eber, and Salah lived after he begot Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters, and Eber lived 403 years and begat sons and, and daughters. And Eber lived 4 and 30 years and begot Peleg. And Eber lived after he begot Peleg 430 years and begot. And Peleg lived after he begot Ru 209 years and begot sons and daughters. And Ru lived 2 and 30 years and begot Serug. And Reu lived after he begot Serug. 207 years and begat sons and daughters, and Sereg, Sereg lived 30 years and begot Nahor, and Sereg lived after begot Nahor, 200 years and begat sons and daughters, and Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begot Terah, 
And Nahor lived after he begot Terah an hundred and nineteen years and begot sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram was Sarai. Sur Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. And Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now that's the end of chapter 11. So let's move on to chapter 12. Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Morah, and unto the Canaanites was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto the, a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Ha'ai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he treated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen, and he asses, and, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. The Lord plagued Pharaoh's and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister, so I might have taken her to me to wife? Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they went away and his wife, and all that he had. So, that is the end of chapter 12, and we will uh, stop there for this uh, 
a holy day. Now, there didn't appear to be too much information in there about specifically constitutional principles. But, but uh, it does, we did learn about Babylon and that this Babylon is always compared to what is, is to the secret combination that the secret society that is striving to bring about a one world order which is for our day and that is what is fighting against our constitution and Torah in our day. We also learn that the Holy Land, the land of Canaan, is to be given to Abraham and to his children, which collectively are, um, um, we have many nations, we have the, the nations of Islam and we have the nations of Israel. And of course there's the argument saying that that uh, Ishmael is to hold the land, and then others say Israel is to hold the land. We don't want to argue here right now about that. I believe in the supremacy of the the house of Israel over that land, and that they are the ones to keep and hold the temple. But that is not important to to the to our constitution in America. But uh, we should understand that the Lord. Who is whoever is able to hold the land at the at that time is is the ones that the Lord has given power to do so. And if we lose power over our land, it's because of our wickedness. And the Lord will send another people to claim the land. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.